Good evening. This Wednesday, September 27th, 2023 meeting of the Advisory Plan Commission for the City of Richmond is called to order. Would you please call the roll? Julie Clark. Here. Michael Devine. John Oler. Here. Bill Price. Here. Lindsay Robinson. Here. Greg Keene. Here. Bob Kidrow. Brianna Washington. Bruce Whistle. Here. Uh, we do have enough for a quorum, and we are able to conduct business this evening. Members should have received the minutes to the August 23rd, 2023 meeting in their packets. Do we have any corrections or additions? If not, the chair will accept the motion. Make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept the minutes of the August 23rd meeting as received. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Uh, new business. We have tonight Ordinance 43-2023, which is the petition of Five Rivers Properties, Inc. Owner Tom Fitzpatrick, PE agent, requesting a zoning map amendment to rezone a parcel from outdoor commercial OC to high-intensity industrial I-2 at O Production Court, Richmond, Indiana, parcel ID 89-10-02-000-302-007-030, legal description point Southwest 2-16-14, 6.251 acres. Is the petitioner here? Thank you. Uh, my name is Tom Fitzpatrick. I'm with Storage of America. I believe the property owners themselves is Five Point Properties. Is that right, Dustin? Uh, and I, five Rivers Properties. What's it? Yeah. So um, <clears throat> we're looking at purchasing this property from Five Points Properties and, and <clears throat> developing a, a storage facility on that site. Um, of course, there's a lot of details that would uh, come with that beyond this. This is just the, the rezoning of obtaining so we can use it for this. Um, this would be our 42nd uh, property in our portfolio. Uh, this year is our 20th anniversary for Storage of America, and um, we uh, would uh, like to uh, bring our product to the Richmond, Indiana area. We're kind of centralized around the Indianapolis area, but we have facilities in um, Anderson <coughs> and sites going up in uh, Muncie, Indiana, and uh, South Bend area, currently in the state of Indiana with other sites in Michigan, Ohio, Illinois, and uh, Missouri. So if there's any questions that you have, I'm here to answer them for you. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Fitzpatrick? Thank you, Mr. Fitzpatrick. Okay. Um, Staff report. Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah. Ordinance 43-2023. Well, I'm sorry, I should have done public uh, comment first. Uh, Ordinance 43-2023 is on public hearing. Is there anyone wishing to speak either in favor or in opposition to the request? Hearing none, public hearing is closed, and we'll go to the staff report. Ordinance 43 is a petition of Five Rivers Property Incorporated owner, Tom Fitzpatrick Agent, located at Zero Production Court in Richmond, Indiana, requesting a zoning map amendment to rezone a parcel from outdoor commercial to high intensity industrial. Current use is agricultural, vacant. Current zoning is outdoor commercial. The tract is just a little over six and a quarter acres. Adjacent zoning to the north and south is high intensity industrial. To the east is outdoor commercial, and to the west is high in intensity industrial. Adjacent land use to the north is agricultural vacant. To the south is single family residential and unplatted vacant lot. To the east is agricultural vacant, and to the west is industrial warehouse. Uh, the UDO determines that outdoor commercial and high intensity industrial are appropriate adjacent uh, zoning districts to the I-2 district. 
And the proposed zoning map amendment would rezone the subject property from OC to I-2 to allow the property to be used as a self-storage facility. The proposed facility would include 13 storage buildings equaling a total of 72,500 square feet. If rezoned, the I uh, if rezoned to I-2, the following uses would be allowed as either permitted uses or special exception uses. Because um, keep in mind when you vote to, or when you rezone a property, you're not just approving the proposed use, but you're, propo you're approving all of the following uh, uses. So I'll go ahead and read those into the record. Uh, small wind turbine system, solar panels, processing of agricultural products, storage of agricultural products, paintball facility, assembly, brewery, distillery, distribution facility, flex space, food production and processing, heavy equipment repair, heavy manufacturing, light manufacturing, liquid fertilizer storage and distribution, outdoor storage, recycling processing, sewage treatment plant, sign painting and fabrication, non-hazardous storage tanks, telecommunication facility, testing lab, tool and die shop, transfer station, transfer station for recycling and waste, above ground utility facility, warehouse, warehouse storage facility, water treatment plant, welding, re and recycling collection point. And then for special exception uses, you would have private heliport, large wind turbine system, incinerator, solar park, and police fire or rescue station. On September 13th, 2023, the public hearing was advertised in Western Way News. Mm -hmm. On September 14th, 11 adjacent property owners were notified by mail. I believe we have one response. Response from Richard and Darlene Rolls at 2273 North Salisbury Road is opposed with these comments. Doesn't need to be upgraded for his purpose. Can do that already. Sounds like a trick to put in something definitely not wanted in the residential area. Enough business traffic here already. There are lots of other places probably available that doesn't affect local residents. You're pushing us away from Richmond. On September 15th, a sign was placed on the property notifying passersby of the September 27th public hearing. Planning staff consulted with all city departments and utilities to determine any objections based on public health and safety. No health and safety objections were raised. Staff recommends approving uh, the amended zoning map petition at zero production court from OC to I-2 based on the following criteria. Number one, Richmond Rising Community Action Plan compatibility. The adjoining zoning districts of OC to the east and I-2 to the north, south, and west are considered appropriate adjacent zoning districts for I-2 per the UDO. The proposed I-2 zoning district is compatible with the future land use map located in the Richmond Rising Community Action Plan, which identifies the property to be developed industrially moving forward. The proposed rezone embraces the plans Grow Richmond's Built Environment Primary Objective 6, which calls for improving the city's collective ability to deliver attractive sites for development and redevelopment. It would also support policy statement one of the same goal that recommends focusing new growth within strategic locations that align with the city's economic development strategies. Number two, current conditions and the character of current structures and uses in the district. The subject property's current zoning reflects a commercial district more than the prescribed industrial vision represented by Richmond's future land use map. The area east of the subject property along West Industries Road, extending roughly one mile to Williamsburg Pike and US, er, slash US Highway 35, is a mixed-use corridor comprised of, comprised of utility, agricultural, commercial, industrial, and residential land uses. Just east and northeast of the subject property are two lots owned by the Indiana Municipal Power Agency that houses two solar parks. Vacant agricultural land and legal nonconforming single-family residences exist directly to the south. Further east on the north side of West Industries Road is a commercial truck terminal and an industrial warehouse, Purina. The Holes Apple subdivision lies on the south side of West Industries Road east of the subject property. West of the subject property along West Industries Road is Richmond's Midwest Industrial Park. The park expands westward past North Round Barn Road and dead ends into Blue Buffalo's facility. The corridor is exclusively comprised of I-2 zoning and houses industrial, commercial, and agricultural uses. Number three. The most desirable use for which the land in each district is adapted. The most desirable use for the subject property is industrial. Because many industrial uses are not compatible in dense residential and commercial areas, clustering industrial uses in spacious areas that do not have large residential footprints helps mitigate potential conflicts. 
Richmond's northwest corner continues to develop as such a place. It is already predominantly zoned I-2 and includes the industry-heavy Midwest Industrial Park, along with the adjacent ind industrial areas along Williamsburg Pike, Progress Drive, and Rich Road. Rezoning this property to I-2 would permit the proposed self-storage facility, but also ensures that any additional potential future uses on the property will be the kind of industrial-related uses that are desirable for ensuring that the city develops and grows responsibly. Number four, the conservation of property values throughout the jurisdiction. The I-2 district's permitted and special exception uses and the proposed self-storage facility should not negatively affect property values throughout the area because industrial uses already exist nearby. The adjacent residences along North Salisbury Road are already in close proximity to industrial uses. Osborne LLC is an immediately adjacent property on the south southwest corner of North Salisbury and West Industries Road. According to the conceptual site plan attached to the application, the southernmost storage structure will remain approximately 50 feet from the nearest property line and will maintain nearly all of the tree lines separating the subject property from the adjacent property to the south. Number five, responsible development and growth. Clustering industrial uses and zoning districts in and around Richmond's Midwest Industrial Park is considered responsible development and growth. The subject property does reside within Richmond's Certified Technology Park, an economic revitalization area, and a tax increment financing district. And then for future use zoning compliance, if the rezone is approved, the applicant will need to submit an improvement location permit application to the Department of Infrastructure and Development for review. The concept site plan included with this petition indicates that all proposed structures will be located within the appropriate front, side, and rear yard setbacks for the I-2 district. The proposed driveway width of 25 feet is well under the maximum driveway width of 45 feet. The site plan also complies with the district's maximum lot coverage of 75% and the minimum main floor area of 3,000 square feet. A landscape plan has been provided which suggests intentions to satisfy foundation, yard, buffer yard, and stormwater pond planting requirements. A recent change of the zoning code eliminates the requirement for buffer yards between conflicting zoning districts when separated by a front yard right of way, so the, a buffer yard along the east property line will not be required. The petitioner may need to apply for a variance of development standards with Richmond's Board of Zoning Appeals prior to receiving an approved ILP because the proposed self-storage facility may be in violation of the high intensity industrial district's standard of a maximum of 10 primary structures per lot. Um, this is something that we can figure out with the petitioner afterwards. It shouldn't have any bearing on your um, recommendation this evening. Uh, there are no written commitments and I'd be happy to entertain any questions that you all might have. Have any questions for uh, staff? Thank you, Mr. Purvis. Okay, uh, this back to us for discussion. Um, anyone have any comments Mr. on this? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I was, if I may, uh -huh. I was contacted by some of the homeowners to the south. When they received their notices, it said I-1 or I-2, and it wasn't clear what the use was. And all those homes directly to the south were concerned because even though we ran storm water and sewer up to Osborne, we haven't ran municipal water up to them, so they're all on wells. And they were concerned when they saw I-2 that it was going to be some kind of manufacturing with chemical waste and runoff that could potentially contaminate their wells. So I was pleased to tell them that it's a warehouse, a self-storage warehouse system, which should provide, you know, no, no risk of normal contamination unless somebody spills a can of paint, which won't be a problem. So um, the narrow depth of this, in my mind, that's probably the best use of this. That, that property is so narrow, you can't really get a manufacturing facility in there of any size <coughs> and have a place for semis to turn around or back up. So I'm in, now in favor of this. I think this is a very good use for this plot of land, the storage facilities. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Oler. Others? Uh, I did bring up something with Mr. Purvis last week that <clears throat> uh, all the homes there are their non-conforming uses. Uh, that's all, I believe that's all, mm -hmm. I too, uh, also. But I wondered, I mean, they were there first. Yes, <laughs> to build up around them. Uh, so, <coughs> you, you know, the, the person who did respond, I, I think, has a good point. And I wonder, though, if it would be too awkward or, or inconsistent with our planning theory to do that as an industrial one um, that would still meet the needs of uh, the petitioner, uh, but it would keep you from uh, later on having some of the things like um, sewage treatment plant there mm -hmm. uh, or uh, 
I, I don't think a tool and die can go in a, a, a one, can it? Uh, but no. it's certainly much heavier commercial exposures. But again, you are going to be surrounded by um, I-2 uh, geography. I, I, did, did you discuss that with the petitioner? I, yeah, I, I mentioned it to the petitioner. Yeah, I mean, and what, what were your feelings about that? Well, as long as it doesn't really change anything for us, you know, our, our intent is for storage. It's always going to be storage. That's our bread and butter. Um, it's, you know, it, as long as we can have the use as I-1 district. Uh, I think when we were looking at this for rezone, we were trying to be consistent with, the, you know, the surrounding zoning parcels. And, and that's what brought us to the I-2. So um, I-1 is perfectly acceptable to us as long as it's the same process as I-2. Um, we do not have, you know, our property is, uh, they're fairly quiet. It's most likely like a residential area because you just have one or two families coming in and out at any one time. Um, the kids may be playing around while mom and dad unload the trucks or something like that. We do have a lot of, we're recently discovering we have a lot of incubator businesses coming into our facility. You know, somebody gets kicked out of the garage for uh, doing some woodworking or something like that. He stores his stuff over there. Um, plumbers or electricians and things of that nature that come in and use our facilities once in a while. Um, and they have been uh, more and more, leasing more and more of our spaces. So. Um, it's just one of those aspects where it is kind of an incubator business for small businesses too, um, not just uh, storage. You know, all our, par our, our units are concrete on the bottom and then our parking lot and drive through aisles are all asphalt pavement. And so, you know, for spills and stuff like that, it's always contained right there. Plus we do not allow any hazardous waste or hazardous materials to be stored in our facilities, uh, nor do we allow uh, lithium ion batteries anymore. Uh, they have been known to create fire. So um, the, those are some of the aspects of, it's a low low traffic volume too. Um, you, you know, you're not putting a lot of traffic out there. It's, it's certainly not that. So, and we have some, uh, you know, we've tried to maintain a nice vegetative buffer, utilize that existing buffer that's on that property between that and the residential area to accommodate those so that they don't have any change in their use or their comfort level or, you know, uh, the residential house, so. Okay. Uh, and you, you are exclusively uh, indoor storage, right? Yes. Okay, yes. so there's not gonna be outside boats or trailers? That, nope, no outdoor. That would be, okay. And I know that there's the 10, 10 building minimum on that. Um, we try to keep our units, they have to be under 12,000 square feet. And so, but you also wanna maximize the amount of use that you have on any given property. So that's why we had, you know, we could build one big building on there, but it's for us. It's that's a it's negative to for us as far as what we could do. But that's why we have that many buildings on the site, and to try to keep it in a, a fortress arrangement to, for security purposes and safety and things of like, like that. We have keypad operating. Somebody will come in, and there's a monitor about the same size as that monitor, and there's two of them: one on the ground, one on, or one on a table like this, or podium then one up at the screen. Within 30 seconds, a live person comes on from usually our Indianapolis office to help that person if they need to, to rent a unit through the kiosk system. And we have uh, weekly managers stop by, maintenance and managers, so there's two people per week that come around, make their rounds to our facilities. So, um, and since we're in Dayton and in um, Indianapolis, it's kind of like right in the middle and it fits both with uh, both our programs, so. Okay. Mr. President, yes. I have a question. This probably comes later. Um, of course, the facility will have a fence around it. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I'm a little bit concerned about is uh, being right next to a house. Um, and at your other facilities, do you happen to put up any like privacy fences on one side or anything like that? Um, what like we a do, fence or yeah, to block the lighting or any. You have that site plan up that we've provided. <clears throat> uh, I can, if you can see along the residential area, we have a building backing up to that, and we've kind of eliminated some of the building away from it where it gets close to the homes as well. Mm -hmm. 
But there will be a, a it's a decorative wrought iron looking fence. It's for security. Yeah. You do not want to climb it. Um, but it also, it's about six foot high. Okay. But it's also decorative, so it's not like a chain link fence or anything like that. Okay. And uh, since there is that vegetative buffer right there, you're not going to really see it, except maybe in the winter time a little bit. But we've also, you know, when we work out through the site plan or the uh, uh, next process, there's some um, architectural features that we can add, okay. especially along that area, like uh, like some brick. If you go to our um, Trotwood facility over in Dayton, mm -hmm. which is right across the street from Lowe's, mm -hmm. you can see that brick that we put on that um, to accommodate the uh, city's city officials because we're right up against the road. And it, Hopefully it matches enough with the old Target building that we occupied. That was a two-phase process because we occupied the Target, redeveloped that, and then we just recently uh, did the outdoors. The same thing over in Indianapolis and West Washington. Uh, we have a, f uh, a little bit of that. Okay. <coughs> Sorry about that. Around I think the that would be facility. More palatable to the. Pardon me. I think that would be more palatable to the neighbors yeah. there. Yeah. So. We've been doing that a lot lately okay. to accommodate communities. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other discussion? Well, Mr. Chairman, is it uh, <clears throat> given the uh, public notice and public hearing, is it uh, <clears throat> legal for us to go ahead and um, move to approve uh, an industrial one rather than an industrial two? Yes. I it's a less intense district. And um, so it doesn't need to be re-advertised. He can go ahead and amend his petition um, verbally. And so assuming the commission makes a mo motion to recommendation of approval or even a non-recommendation with the caveat that it be uh, your recommendation that it's I-1 instead of I-2, and then that would give Council your information. Council would have the option then to uh, accept a verbal uh, amendment to his petition, and then council could then amend its ordinance in accordance with that. Well, with that understanding, if the petitioner is willing to amend the petition, I move approval of uh, industrial I-1 for this property. Okay, I think we would need to first make a motion to or do we need to go oh we wouldn't amend it would it because we we can't do that since we he, i would want to just get a simple statement on the record from him saying that he would verbally amend his petition so that it, uh if i one is acceptable uh you know because council could technically override your recommendation so if if he wanted to keep it with i2 but assuming that he would be willing to amend it in front of council as well, then that would be something that we would want on the record. <coughs> I would cert Storage of America myself and myself as Tom Fitzpatrick as the agent and vice president of development would uh, amend our application for a I-1 to a I-1 rezone dis district, if I'm saying that correctly. That's mm -hmm. perfect. <coughs> so yeah, that, and then that gives council the option if council for whatever reason doesn't feel the same or doesn't think the same way, then it could either go with I-2 or follow, follow the uh, commission's recommendation for I-1. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we, we have a proper motion uh, on the table. Is I'll that right? And a second. So, and just to be clear, the motion is for I want. approval, but with the recommendation that it be based on I-1 instead of I-2. Correct. Right. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, would you please uh, uh, do the roll call, please? Lynn Clark. Aye. Ron Oler. Aye. Joe Price. Aye. Susie Robinson. Aye. Rick Steens. Aye. Bruce Whistle. Aye. Uh, motion carried six to zero. Thank you very much. Thank you. It would be recommended to City Council for approval. Yes, sir. Uh, I-1. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the filing deadline for the September uh, 
for today's meeting was August 23rd. For the October meeting, the filing is September <coughs> 27th, which is today. Do we have a filing? We do have one item uh, on the agenda for next month. Okay. And is that still meeting <coughs> on October 25th? Uh, no, that meeting is actually going to be the following Wednesday, November 1st. I'll send out an email to remind everyone as well. Okay. Do I think we need to approve that, don't we? Uh, I think that's fine to approve it, and then we would notify the media as well. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Staff would notify media. And we do have one additional housekeeping thing after you, if you want to do the vote on that. Okay. Uh, we have a, this is a request uh, by Mr. Purvis who can't attend the October 20th, or honor the October 25th <coughs> day. We'd like to have the meeting uh, on November 1st. And so we do need to uh, uh, vote for approval of that. So move. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to have our October meeting November 1st. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. And then, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we did accidentally omit from the agenda the proof of publication, which is the housekeeping motion. So I would ask the board to entertain a motion to accept the proof of publication, which was published in advance. It states the time, date, place, and items uh, for tonight's hearing. Move to accept. Thank you. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept the proof of publication. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion carried. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anything else to come before the commission tonight? If not, Chair will accept a motion. So moved. To adjourn. We have second. a motion second <laughs> to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned. <sighs> I heard you giggle when you said everybody, when I said we have the worst deal. You are watching Whitewater Government Television, WGTV, Channel 11, part of the Whitewater Community Television family of stations.